course, we are in Maynard, right on the edge of Austin, just to the east. And we are praising Yahweh for allowing us to stand here in this hard place, this tough and dry and dead place. And we are thanking God for breathing life into it because we are here. And so those adversaries that are trying to come up against us, well, all I got to say is, na 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 <laughs> If you want to win, you need to change sides. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Father God, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God of all life, all living things, God of creation, we honor you today by our, our voice and our heart and our mind and our worship, and we come to you today. We bow before you, the almighty king of the universe. There is no king above you. And we thank you, Lord, that you have chosen us to be representatives of yours here in this earth. Lord, we know that the adversary is laughing. He thinks he has beat us, but we are in submission to you, Lord. And when you are ready... All of your people will rise up with one accord and strike the adversary so that there will be none remaining. We thank you, Lord, that you are the master of the universe and that you have chosen us to follow you, to serve you, to uh, worship you, to uh, minister to you. And we thank you for it, Lord. You are the mighty God, the everlasting Savior. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you that you're bringing in those who you want here today, that they cannot stay away. <laughs> and we thank you, Lord, that all of these that have promised to come and wanted to come will come because you are the master. You are calling them, Lord, and we, ask our, we add our voice to yours. Come to Zion. Taste and see how good God is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we give our prayers and and praises unto you, Yahweh, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And we know that the world just doesn't know how good you are or they would be flocking to your courts. So we thank you, Lord, that you're giving us an opportunity to express your goodness to the world. And we ask you, Lord, to cause those who are hungry for you to come and taste and see that you truly are good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everyone say it. Lord, I'm hungry. I ask you to feed me this morning, and I'm thirsty, Lord. Pour your living, out, living waters out on us in abundance, and we thank you for it. Wash us inside and out, and give us that knowledge and understanding of you. In the name of Messiah Yeshua, amen. Baruch Hashem. You may be seated. I think uh, God's changing my subject this morning. <laughs> but there's a reason that he gave me the original subject so that I would uh, have my heart, my mind all lined up with his heart, his mind, so I could dump more of it on you. Okay? And uh, I'm looking at my class this morning. <laughs> And I praise God for you. <clears throat> We're going to start off with Jeremiah chapter 3, uh, beginning in verse 1. Uh, I'm going to skip down. Okay. I guess we'll just start in verse 1. Yahweh says, If a man divorces his wife and she leaves him and marries another man, then if the first one marries her again, that land will be completely defiled. But you prostituted yourself to many lovers. Yet you want to return to me, says Yahweh. Come right in, make yourself at home. We're just getting started with our morning class. Uh huh. He is. So uh, 
We're in Jeremiah chapter 3, and I'm beginning in verse 1, and we've got a screen up here that's got the scriptures on it. If you'd like to read along, if you need a little bigger, I can fix that. Can you all read that from where you are? Yes. Okay. All right, then we'll just leave it there, and if you need it a little bigger just to make it easier, I'll do that, okay? Jeremiah chapter 3, beginning in verse 1, Yahweh says, If a man divorces his wife, and she leaves him and marries another man, then if the first one marries her again, that land will be completely defiled. But you prostituted yourself to many lovers, yet you want me to return says Yahweh. Raise your eyes to the bare hills. Take a look where you have not had sex. Talking about the marital relationship. You sat by the roadsides waiting for them like a nomad in the desert. You had defiled the land with your prostitution and wickedness. Speaking to Israel. For this reason... The showers have been withheld, and there has been no rain in the spring. Still you maintain a whore's brazen look and refuse to be ashamed. Did you just now cry to me? <laughs> my father, you are my friend from my youth. Thinking he won't bear a grudge forever, will he? <laughs> he wouldn't maintain it right to the end. You say this, but you keep doing evil things. You just do whatever you want. In the days of Yehoshua, the king, uh, Adonai said to me, Have you seen the things that backsliding Israel has been doing? She goes up on every bare hill and under every green tree and prostitutes herself there. Every green tree, remember? Does that ring a bell from somewhere that you know about? I've, I've seen them since I was a little kid. Ever December 25th, green trees Christmas. everywhere, inside of houses and out. Christmas, right? Yep. And he says, you prostitute yourself under every green tree, giving these wonderful presents to people you don't even know. <laughs> That's silly. I said that after she had done all these things, she would return to me, but she hasn't returned. Ooh. Meanwhile, her unfaithful sister, Judah, has been watching. <laughs> I saw that even though backsliding Israel had committed adultery so that I had sent her away and given her a divorce document, unfaithful Judah, her sister, was not moved to fear. Instead, she too went and prostituted herself. The ease with which Israel prostituted herself defiled the land as she committed adultery with stones and logs. <laughs> Not even God's. <laughs> Yet in spite of all this, her unfaithful sister Judah was not returned to me wholeheartedly. She only makes a pretense of it, says Yahweh. Then Yahweh said to me, Backsliding Israel has proved herself more righteous than unfaithful Judah. <laughs> wow, that's a lot. Go and proclaim these words towards the north. Return, backsliding Israel, says Yahweh. I will not frown on you, for I am merciful, says Yahweh. I will not bear a grudge forever. Only acknowledge your guilt that you have committed crimes against Yahweh, your God, that you were promiscuous with strangers under every green tree. There you are. <laughs> and that you have not paid attention to my voice, says Yahweh. It's so wild that people that claim to be believers can go and give strange gifts to strangers in this Christmas season Xmas season, whatever you want to choose to call it. Well, let's put Christ back in Christmas. Well, he never was there to begin with. Exactly. <laughs> well, you can't put something back into something that was never there. So he says, you have uh, been promiscuous with strangers under every green tree and that you have not paid attention to my voice, says Yahweh. And they go give all these Christmas presents out to everybody they know and they don't even tithe. Right. 
They don't even give anything to God. They don't give a gift to God, not one. Oh, I gave $5 last week. Okay, big deal. <laughs> How much did you spend for all those gifts you were buying those strangers, you know? Verse 14, black, return backsliding children, says Yahweh, for I am your master. I will take you from a city, one from a city, two from a family, and bring you to Theon. I will give you shepherds. I will give you shepherds after my own heart, and they will feed you with the knowledge and understanding. And, says Yahweh, in those days when your numbers have increased in the land, people will no longer talk about the ark for, of, for the covenant of Yahweh. They won't think about it. They won't miss it. They won't make, make another one, and that, uh, when that time comes, they will call Jerusalem the throne of Yahweh, and all the nations will be gathered together there to the name of Yahweh, to Jerusalem. No longer will they live according to their stubbornly evil hearts. In those days, the house of Yehuda will uh, live longer with, live together with the house of Israel, and they will come together from the lands of the north and I, that I gave your ancestors as an inheritance. I thought that I would like to put you among the sons with the inheritance rights and give you a pleasant land, the best heritage of all nations. I thought that you would call me my father and never stop following me. But like the faithless woman who betrays her husband, you, house of Israel, have betrayed me, says Yahweh. A sound, oops, there we go. A sound is heard on the heights. The house of Israel is crying, pleading for mercy, and that's what's happening right now. I mean, the people are starting to, are, their hearts and minds are beginning to agree in mass that they have done something wrong because God has turned his back upon them. Yeah. And that's where we are right now today. And that's why we're having so much flooding in various parts of the country. God is showing his anger. Is anybody listening? Oh, well, it's just the weather. It's climate change. It's uh, warming of the temperatures, you know. Uh, we're having these iceberg melts because that's this. No, it's because they're not being refreshed because there's no rain falling up in the North Pole. But it's the same rain that's not falling the rest of the world either. So you got dry places getting drier, and the uh, North and South Pole are losing masses because it's the majority of the mass is uh, water that's been frozen into icebergs and things and uh, glaciers. And so these things are melting back because they haven't been refreshed. Actually, well, they will grow before they're done. I guarantee you that. <laughs> mm hmm. But it doesn't matter. The point is, you see in all this in your own mind's eye, you're saying, oh, it's just, it's just temperature change, climate change. No, 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 no. So here we are. Return backsliding ch children, and I will heal, heal your backsliding. We can't even repent of our backsliding until God heals it. And so he says, here we are coming to you, for you are Yahweh, our God. Indeed, the hills have proved to be a delusion. Likewise, the orgies on the mountains. Truly, the salvation of Israel is in Yahweh, our God. There is no other hope. The problem with America today is it is not returning to Yahweh. Right. And the problem with the rest of the world is they are rebelling against the very knowledge of Yahweh. Why are they rebelling? Do you, do you know the real reason why people are rebelling against Yahweh? You know that my son told me, we don't need the law, we've got Jesus. <laughs> Romans 3.31, I should read it, it's a good book. So what do we say then? The world, just like backsliding Israel, the world has decided that Yahweh is not worth following. They believe that he is a hard taskmaster. 
and that they don't even want to know the law because if they learned the law, then they would be obligated to follow it. And they think that as long as they're ignorant, they won't be held accountable. So they are hiding from the truth. And that's a fact. Hmm? People have itching ears. Pick up that microphone, please. They think just because God comes up into their congregation and heals them, it, it makes it okay, but it's not. Psalms 89, uh -huh. verse 30. Uh -huh. Read it. Well, we have a, a need for people to learn to appreciate the Father. And the son did not come to replace the father. He said, in that day, you'll not pray anything of me, but you'll pray to my father in my name, and he will grant it. So it's the father that we're supposed to be focusing towards. Yeshua constantly, Messiah Yeshua constantly drew our eyes and our hearts and our attention back to the father. And what we do, oh, well, God, he's so hardline. He knows He's demanding. He wants you to keep all these laws perfectly, and nobody can keep it perfectly. So let's don't learn those things, because then he won't at least fault us for being knowledgeable. Well, he faults you for choosing to be unknowledgeable. So let's just continue on here in verse 23 again. Indeed, the hills have provided a delusion. What are the hills in prophecy? Do you know? They are small people groups. The mountains are nations. And the oceans are the masses of the people of the world. So when you read these things in the prophecies, you need to plug these values in where it says the hills have pro proved a delusion. Well, these small little groups of people that claim to know about God and have their own little theology and is their own private interpretation that's the hills. And the people are following. It's proven to be a delusion. Are you following it? Yep. It's so clear when you understand those things. Likewise, the orgies on the mountains where they have these. You know, I've been in churches where there were witches openly working in the, yep. in the churches. And we went, I went to this one church, and there was this woman up there that was practicing. She was a practicing witch. And she was standing up there in the middle of the song and worship time doing this jerking motion and stuff. And, oh, she was in the, oh, you know. And she's trying to draw people to her, you know, so she could teach them the, the devil's truth. <laughs> there is such a thing. And... <clears throat> I can't believe this woman is just being allowed to do that right there in the church. And they, don't see it. and they couldn't see it. And so anyway, I went up to the pastor afterwards and I said, how long are you going to allow that witch to operate in your congregation? And he says, what witch? And I said, don't be blind, idiot. Open your eyes. If you can't see it, you're truly blind. And what good are you as a leader of the congregation if you're blind? And it's like this is hitting him right between the eyes, you know. And I was fixing the move. I was going to his congregation because God put me there. And I, God was about to move me out of there. He'd already told me he'd have a job for me down in uh, uh, Reynosa, Mexico. And... He told me that uh, if he doesn't get off his can and start using you, you, you're the anointed one in the congregation. He can't even see it. And he says if, if he doesn't get off of the stick and start using you the way I called you into his congregation, I'm going to remove him. I'm going to take you away from him and put you in Renosa. At least down there, those who are desperately starving and hungry, they'll listen to you. <laughs> So the next week, I was called down there for a job prospect. And uh, there was a Zenith manufacturing facility there in Reynosa. And so um, right across from McAllen. And so anyway, I went down there, and they loved me. They said, we want to hire you. So, but I don't know how much we can give you. I have to go back and talk to my 
the owners and see if they will allow me the budget I need to bring you in here, you know. And so they went back, and, and uh, when I got back home, that next night was uh, Sunday evening. Uh, the pastor got up in front of the congregation and says, Tonight, David Hall is going to minister. I said, Huh? He didn't even, <laughs> he didn't even tell me. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I said, well, okay. Whatever God wants. And if he opens the door, I'm walking through it because it's not me, it's him anyway. So I, I um, got up and I, I said, I'd like to take one, just a one or two uh, minutes to step aside and hear my father's voice. And see what he wants me to say. So I stepped back into a little back uh, ch clothes changing room back there off the stage. And I just prayed for just a moment. It was probably not more than a minute that I was there. And I heard his voice clearly and I knew he was with me. <laughs> he don't have to tell me what to say because he's going to do that while I talk. Are you following me? And so I got in there, came back out. And the pastor says, okay, well, tonight he's going to minister to everybody. But I want him to start with my wife. <laughs> well, I did what I was shown, what God's voice said to me. I did it. <clears throat> and one at a time, everybody that was there was ministered to. And when I started, I said, this is not about putting on a show. This isn't about being slain in the spirit. This isn't about uh, me, me, I, I, or you, you. It's about him, him. And we're going to do what he wants tonight. And so when they started coming forward, Every one of them would come up there, and I would tell them something about what their biggest problem was that they faced. And then I said, we're going to fix that right here, right now. And then I took the demon that was causing that problem, and I cast him into the pit. And it's one, one right after another. There were, it's interesting, numbers are very interesting. There were, I believe it was like 21 people there that night. I don't count heads. I'm just guessing based upon, you know, an estimate. So anyway, they came up there, and every person that came up, the pastor, his mouth just got bigger and bigger. He's never seen anything like this before. And when we got through, he got up and he says, well, I don't need prayer, so... <laughs> I'm that lying devil. <laughs> I'll see what's there. <laughs> so anyway... Uh, he says, uh, <clears throat> he told me, he says, I've never seen anybody minister like this before. Never. And I grew up in the Pentecostal and the Assemblies of God. And he says, I have never, ever in my life seen a minister call up every person in the audience and pray for them, and hit the nail right on the head every time. And he says, I knew all of these people. You didn't know any of them, except for the handful that shows up regularly. And he says, you hit it right. I can't believe it. I've never seen this before. So anyway, that was just my introduction into the ministry world for God. And and he hammered it in in a big way. One time I was in another church, it was before that one, but it was a big, big congregation. It was like there was normally around 250, 300 people there. And they had these ministering psalmists, prophetic psalmists come through. And I'm, I'm used to all the little flashing mirrors, smoking mirrors and whatnot. And so I kind of hang back so I don't participate in it because I usually call the ones out in the middle and the front, you know. And I, I sat plumb in the very back, in the very center of the very back, the most inconspicuous spot you can sit in. And this guy says, um, I'm, he was calling people out of the audience. He says, 
uh, the, the man with the uh, white shirt and black tie. Well, my tie was blue, so I didn't think he was talking to me. <laughs> didn't realize it just looked black from up there. <laughs> so I'm sitting there, and I'm looking around to see who's going to get up, and nobody was getting up. And he said, he's looking around right now, looking around. And I, I said, me? He goes, yes, you with the anointing. <laughs> See, I have been skipped over, overlooked on purpose by the pastor. He didn't like me. I found out later why. Because he came out of witchcraft and he wasn't completely free of it. And those demons in there wouldn't let him use me. Because if they did, they lose. So anyway, that's all he said to me. I stood up and, and he said, blah, 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 blah. And then I sat down. And But I already had my... My message from God <laughs> is that my anointing is true and I didn't need to worry about it because he showed it to that minister. He can show it to whoever he wants to, you understand? So I was just happy with that. I didn't need another word from God. And all my life, I've had people coming to me that needed ministry. I just, they, just, they just sort of were, I guess you could say... <laughs> magically drawn to me <laughs> spiritually, <laughs> spiritually powerfully drawn and uh, one lady was there in the, this pastor's congregation that was the big one and <clears throat> I felt strongly that God wanted me to minister to her because she had come out of uh, you know what Shoal Creek is mm -hmm. it's a psychology psychiatric hospital yeah so anyway, uh, I just felt strongly, strongly that I was supposed to pray for this woman. And so anyway, I walk up to her, and she backs up against the wall. She puts her arm up like this and her other arm out like this. It's like she's trying to shield herself from the light of God coming out of me. <laughs> and it's so bright, she's having to cover herself with her cape, you know, this invisible cape. <laughs> <laughs> and so I told her, I said, do you want to be set free? And she didn't respond because those demons are in control. I said, if you do, all you got to do is ask. And I turned and walked away. After the service, she came up to me and she said, would you pray for me? I said, I thought you'd never ask. So I had her come over to my house and we ministered to her privately so she wouldn't be out in front of everybody calling these legions of demons out of her, <laughs> you know. And so anyway, others have ministered to her to only take out one or two demons at a time, right? And they think they've done something good. And the point is, is by the time we got through with her, she was acting virtually normal. And she'd never been that way before. She spent the night at our house and during the night, I was teaching her while I was casting the demons out of her how to do it. And that night, I bet she must have cast out 150 or 250 demons out of herself. And I'm watching. I'm in my bed, in my bedroom, and these demons are flying through my house. <laughs> and I'm picking them out of the air and throwing them in the pit while they're flying through. I don't want them to go around and harass other people, you know, so I just throw them into the pit where they're, it's like a jail cell, right? And so we, we were having fun. <laughs> and uh, that morning I came in and said, you were praying last night, weren't you? And she said, oh, yeah. And I said, you were doing some good too, weren't you? And she said, oh, yeah. <laughs> you see, it's not that hard to cast out demons if you've been taught the truth. It's not that hard to be delivered, even self-delivered, if you've been taught the truth. It is easy. Doesn't mean they're not going to come back and try to sneak back in on you. But if you cast them out, then you can throw them out again. You know, so they're going to give up on coming to you. <laughs> Does this make sense? We must face the fact that the whole Christian world is in ignorance. They're blind, leaders of the blind, and they're stumbling around and trampling all over everything. They don't even know what they're doing. 
I was dealing with spirits and demons since I was probably, I don't know. I started seeing them, I guess, when I was about four years old. You ever, have you ever seen the pink elephant? <laughs> when I was four years old, I, when I was four years old, I got sick and had a 106 degree temperature for several days. And during that time, they said I was hallucinating. <laughs> well, they're the ones that are failing to see the t spirits that are around causing these problems. But <coughs> anyway, I saw a pink elephant during that time, and it was real. And my dad said, you kept talking about a pink elephant when you were hallucinating. I said, oh, yeah. Well, maybe you might want to consider whether I was really hallucinating or if this is real stuff I'm seeing. <laughs> You know why most people can't see demons? They've been lied to by their own parents. When I was little, I told my mom, there's something or somebody in my bedroom. And she came and she said, oh, it's okay, honey. It's just your imagination. Yeah. And don't tell anybody you're seeing things in your bedroom because they'll think you're crazy, okay? <laughs> And that's where I was untaught the truth. Because as a small, innocent child, I was able to see the spirit world. I didn't know yet how to operate it. I didn't know how to, what to do with them. But I could see them there. And when I was in high school, an angel came to me and delivered a message to me while we were on my senior trip. I wouldn't go out with the, all the alcohol and the hard rock thump and music. I sat out there by the swimming pool and it was too loud there so I went into the cabin and I sat on my bunk, opened my Bible and started reading. I'll never forget it. Yeah, I sat on my bunk reading, and I heard this voice so loud and clear that I thought someone was in the room with me. When I heard it, I jumped up and looked around, thinking somebody was there, and I didn't see anything. So I went and sat back down, and I heard again, David. And I got up and ran all the way around the cabin thinking somebody was up there trying to play a trick on old David Hall. There wasn't anything there. And I sat back down and I remembered uh, where uh, Samuel had heard the voice of God and he thought Eli was calling him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so when he said it again, I said, speak, Lord, your servant's listening. And that was the beginning of my relationship with my God. Now, that's the only time I heard his voice so clearly that it sounded like it was in the room until years later. But I heard it, and I knew it. The point is, there's a world beyond this one. If the only world you believe in is the one you see and hear, then you need to receive the Messiah. Because he will open your eyes and ears to the heavenly kingdom and feed you with his spirit of truth. That's a fact. The same God that gave us Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, and, and Matthew, and Mark, and Luke, and John, and all of, uh, the Revelation, the same God is alive and well today. And if we will but listen and believe, he will speak to us. And you will hear. And if you're walking in the word, his original word, you will know the truth. And the truth will set you free. Amen. And that's the way it works. But we have a call today. 
in this last two years or four, I guess, probably five now, again, I'm going on towards five, this world has grown rapidly more progressively evil to the point that evil is becoming more manifested as evil and go good is manifested more as good. The reason we have our president today, Donald Trump, he is a godly man. He does try hard to do what is right. The world is opposed to him. But the world has always been opposed to us. That's the way it's always been. Being a follower and a believer in Yahweh sets you apart from the rest of the world. And they hate you for it. And they always will. The only difference between some of us and the rest of us <laughs> is that we don't mind being made a fool of for him. But if I said that, they'd think I'm crazy. Lord, that's what my mama told me. She started it. She told me, if you believe that, they'll call you crazy. They'll assign you a psychiatrist, probably put you on medication, try to shut that part of your brain down. I don't want my brain shut down for nobody but God. Now, look, we've got a job to do. And this, this book that we read, we take so casually, is not just a casual thing, but it is the word of Almighty Yahweh. And it's time for some of us to start acting like it. <laughs> and I'm not meaning that I believe any of you are following that line. I'm just saying it's that time. Time when evil is marked as evil and good is marked as good, and we follow in the steps of Messiah Yeshua. Amen. Amen. So, am I surprised to hear that there are people in this world that are trying to curse me? No, oh, it's been that way from the beginning. So, what? Well, they're cursing your finances. Well, I don't care. I don't have any finances anyway. It all belongs to God. I gave every cent I have to God, and I'm still that way. Amen. I don't worry. Well, if somebody wants to curse my finances, they're not cursing me. They're cursing him. Yeah, that's right. He's real to me. Oh, he is. Yeah, that's true. Right. We talk all the time. Sometimes he talks more than Caddy Ch Chitty, chatty Kathy, yeah, you know, that little talking doll. <laughs> well, what's he talking about? Whatever I need to hear. That's what he does. I used to prepare sermons. I'd get up with five pages all outlined out. And then God changes subjects on me. <laughs> Just like he did this morning. I had a lot of stuff ready to talk about. But he's, a, he's the boss. I, I'm the puppet. He's the puppeteer. I don't get to choose what he's going to say. I don't get to do what he says do. I have to do what he says do and make sure it gets done and quit trying to figure that out for myself. Because every time I've tried to figure it out for myself, I've misunderstood what it is he wanted me to do. So we must follow him. It's a personal responsibility to believe in him, to pray to him, to accept his verdicts above our own choosings. You know, I've been believing for years that I was going to be a wealthy man, and that's probably got me into more trouble than anything else I've ever done because now i got these expectations. Okay, well, next week, at Friday at 6 o'clock, I'm going to get this check for $10 million. No, 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 no. I don't know. He might do that at some point. But that's not what he's like. He wants to take little people and do big things with them. Amen. And if I can find a way to make it happen, then it's me, not God. 
I want to find a way to make what he wants to happen, happen. And then it will happen because he's bigger than me. I got a little secret for you, too. He's smarter than me. <laughs> he's much smarter than me. And I, I am so thrilled and overjoyed that he would choose me to represent him. And I have to remember who I represent. It's not me. It's not about me. Why, you cast out all these demons. Well, so what? That's nothing. He created all them demons. <laughs> and they got a reason for being there. And if I go casting them out, I'm wrecking his plans. Oops. Can you hear that? If God didn't want you to have these problems to overcome, then he would take those problems away like that. He wants and needs them there for you and for me. Oh, but it's the devil. Ooh, the devil. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, I'll tell you something. The devil did Job a great favor. Because through the efforts of the adversary, Job came to believe in the true and living God and be his representative in the earth. Yes. So thank God for the devil. Mm -hmm. I like to play with him. Show him how little he is. <laughs> 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 we were talking this morning about how the devil will try to scare you, you know. He puts these big smoke screens and mirrors up and you start going, oh no, the devil, the devil. No, he's nothing compared to my father. Amen. He created the guy. I mean, this devil doesn't have the sense enough to lie down and play dead, which he's been dead for a very long time. You know, I just praise God that he's given me an opponent to work on so I can get stronger. Amen. I can't get strong without lifting weights. Weight is opposition. And by working on the opposition, I get strong. Don't you? Yep, man. Yes. <sighs> That's what I'm talking about. Uh -huh. Well, we're going to try to get this uh, Spirit Realm seminar started there in the next week or two. I'm on probably two weeks. I'm going to hold it here until we don't fit in here, and then we'll go somewhere else. Um, but it's about a... Mm, I'd say an eight or ten week course, something like that. And we will cover everything the Bible has to say about the spiritual realm, about the angels, about the demons, about the curses and the blessings. And we will talk about how they come and how they work and what we can do to affect the spiritual realm, which is God's kingdom. Each of us are supposed to have an influence, an effect on that kingdom. And God created us to be a part of, a living part of that kingdom. And there are very few people willing to, to have the chutzpah necessary to step into it. Amen. But yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, no evil for you I are with me. me. Your rod and, and your staff, they, they comfort come me, me, but it scares the hell out of the devil. <laughs> <laughs> you've prepared a place for me you fill my cup with with wine in the presence of my enemies <laughs> my cup runneth oil over with oil surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life because I'm dwelling in the house of Yahweh <laughs> amen I'm not afraid of anything on that side of the fence. Amen. I don't look at that side of the fence and longingly plead for the master to let me over there now. He knows when I'm ready. He knows when I'm ready. And he knows what I need now before I even ask. Amen. So I just say, Lord, your will be done. 
This morning I told him, I said, if you want me to look like I have physically died in front of the world, I'll do it. Because I serve you. And I trust you. And I hope we can all say that. Amen. Indeed, the hills have proved a delusion. One thing I notice about Harry Potter, you ever see the Harry Potter movies? <laughs> Most people go, oh, no, I wouldn't watch that. And witchcraft. Uh, that's nothing. But Harry Potter couldn't do any magic except at Hogwarts. <laughs> you know? In that place of illusion where everybody believes in the lies, that's the only place he could do it. Yeah. Indeed, the hills have proven, have proved a delusion. Likewise, the orgies on the mountains, truly the salvation of Israel is in Yahweh our God. But from our youth, the shameful things of idolatry has devoured the fruit of our ancestors' work their flocks and their herds, their sons and their daughters. Let us go down in our shame. Let us um, lie down in our shame. Let our disgrace cover us, for we have sinned against Yahweh our God, both we and our ancestors. Um, from our youth until today, we have not paid attention to the voice of Yahweh our God. How many people, let's just take a survey. How many of you here in this room have actually read the Bible through at least once? Yeah. Well, some have, some have, okay, that's good. How many of you know that until you've read it through at least three times, you don't know anything about the Bible or God? Mm -hmm. I read it through, and I'm not bragging, I'm just trying to make a point. I read it through in one year, I'm guessing because I don't remember how many times, but I know it was at least three, if not five times in one year. And every time I read it, I got more and more and more out of it. Because no man can truly know all there is to know about God. Amen, that's so true. But I will tell you this. He loves us yes. when we love him. Yes. And when we seek him out, he seeks us out. When, I'll give you an example. When Yaakov prayed to Yahweh, the Hebrew word that they used there, uh, it was to pray as a lingering um, incense. You ever, you ever see incense burning? Burns a long time, doesn't it? And it keeps a little cloud of smoke in the room as long as you burn it. And that's the way Yaakov prayed to God. Wow. He didn't abate. It just kept getting thicker and thicker and thicker. And then the Bible says Yahweh prayed back to him in the same way. And that's when his wife became pregnant. He was asking God, why don't we have children? And he was burning before the Lord. Yeshua said it this way. Um, if you come to the judge and he will not hear your voice, continue to pound on his chamber doors until he opens. If an evil, natural, judge would be this way, how much more will the judge of all eternity be this way? He will listen to those who with determination strive to make contact with him. And if you're only asking for a loaf of bread for your son, he's not going to give you a serpent to give to him. That's the nature of our God. Now, our Spirit Realm Seminar lays all the scriptural foundation out for everything you think you do or might learn about heaven and the spiritual kingdom. 
There's nothing in it to fear. I had a lady came to me and said she was so afraid of the devil, she didn't want to learn about the devil. I said, well, then you don't want to know all about God, do you? Why? Because the devil's a part of God's kingdom. He created it. That was God. Yahweh created both good and evil, it says in the, in the prophets. There, there's nothing made that was made without him. So if you don't want to know something about God, that's because that thing that you are hiding from has a hold on you. You want Yahweh to have a hold on you, or do you want that demon to hold, have a hold on you? You must face your foe. You must face your foe. I got handouts for this spirit realm seminar, probably about like that thick. Page after page after page, and it's almost all scripture, just going through it. And I want to give it to you free. It, it was a part of my life. It's been a part of my life. And I don't charge for it. I mean, if you want to make a contribution to help it continue going and get it into the hands of others, I accept that. But I don't charge to teach you this course. I got it free from God. I can tell you story after story after story after story after story after story on this thing. This is a daily occurrence with me. I could fill up a book just from last week. So if you want it, it's free. There's no reason for you to not come and get it. Be sure to bring a big plate. <laughs> <laughs> we have not paid attention to the voice of Yahweh our God. Most people barely ever do more than read it once, if that. Most people have never even read a fraction of what the Word of God says. One of my former relatives told me she puts her book open to the Psalms next to her bed and it helps her to sleep more peacefully. Fool. If you don't read it, it don't help you. You need to consume it, eat it. That's why he gave us the Bible, so we would have something to ingest that would help to guide our hearts and minds into what truth is and what the lie is. You believe in God, you do well. There's also a devil out there, too, and he's just as believable, if not more. And he trembles. Yeah, it says a, it says the devil believes and, and trembles. That's scripture. So I want you to I want to encourage you to come and, and try this spirit realm course out. You're going to have to go through at least the first two sections of training before we can make any progress. You know why? Because in the first two sections, I teach you the definitions to the words that we're going to be using to describe the spirit realm. And if you don't know the definitions, you might as well go home. And we're going to look to the Bible for the answers of those definitions. And that will be the first two lessons. And there's about, uh, I think, somewhere around uh, eight or nine hours in, that f in those two sections. You can't get that one night. <laughs> I do good to get three hours in one, one night, and that's almost more than people can handle. But they always say, Please, go on, go on. But I tried it, and guess what? They couldn't hold it. They couldn't handle it. So we, we stick to three hours, and if my voice will hold up that long these days, I don't know. My, I'm not a young man anymore. But I will tell you, I'm young in God, and I love him. And I'm still just starting to learn about the spirit realm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only 10 years behind him. I'm 70. Uh -huh. I told the Lord I wanted 120. He might give it to me. 
but I don't want to get 120 and be brain dead. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> if he's going to make me brain dead at 120, he might as well take me home then, right? I will tell you that we will not be broadcasting those classes on the internet. But they are going to be recorded live so that I can have fresh recordings of these things because none of my other recordings, it seems like the adversary always pokes his finger in there and tries to ruin it. But I've got enough of it on, online now in our yeshiva. Uh, all you have to do is register to study and you can study it for free. And you can go at your own pace. If you can handle nine hours of this stuff at one crack, then help yourself. <laughs> Amen. Longer than nine hours. Oh, yeah. Well, I calculate that the first three sections, no, first four sections, have an average of three hours. The last section has... Um, either six or nine, I forget, it's been a while since I've taught it. Six or nine, nine hours nine in the hours last section. Are you talking about level five? I had to break I it up into three up parts. Into three part. So, because people are just not getting it. <laughs> it's too much, it's to, too much to, 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 you know, it's you like know, eating it's a nice steak. Nice There's only so much of it you can eat, eat before you have to take a break. I'm going to give you a really bad indication. <laughs> well, you can look forward to that start here very shortly. And uh, it's like I say, it's available online if you want to study it there. Um, you can look on our flyer or go to our website, and it'll show you a section on education. And you click on the first link in the education part, and it'll, it'll take you to our yeshiva. Yeshiva is a Jewish word. It means... Um, it's a bi Jewish Bible school. Yeah. And so I'll be happy to help you to get started in that. And if you can, if your computer can get online, you can just watch all you want. And just get happy as a lark. Oh, <laughs> so, well, that's it for this morning. Uh, I've got a, in about three minutes, we're going to start up our morning service. So uh, don't go away. We're just getting started good. We still got to talk about this week's Torah, pa Torah Parsha. And so that's going to be a, a joy to get into. I know because I've already been there, done that. I taught this course, I've taught this a lot of times. This is the Parsha Balak. It's about Fran the first initial original Francis the Talking Mule. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> huh?